Hello and welcome to this video on how to run a confirmatory factor analysis with ordinal data in the M Plus software. My name is Christian Geiser. I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials usually related to multivariate statistical methods such as structural equation models, multi-level models and latent class analysis and often involving the M plus software. If this is something that interests you, then please consider subscribing to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter and additional videos and workshops. In this video, I want to show you how you can run a confirmatory factor analysis in the M plus software when you have ordinal outcome variables, meaning ordinal items, for example, from a questionnaire you want and you want to run your factor model at the item level. Why does this require special attention and special treatment? The reason is that ordinal data with just a few response categories, for example, Likert style items, don't satisfy the assumptions that come with standard factor analysis and structural equation modeling estimation techniques such as maximum likelihood estimation. When we use maximum likelihood estimation, then the assumption is that we have multivariate normal data. And when we have ordinal data, then by definition, those variables could not be normally distributed. And so using a covariance matrix with ordinal data and maximum likelihood estimation could be problematic. It could lead to incorrect um, fit statistics, incorrect uh, bias parameter estimates and standard errors. And so when you have ordinal data, you typically want to use methods that are designed to appropriately handle the ordinal nature of those variables. In particular, when you have only a few response categories and or when your um, item categories are skewed in that case, then it's definitely a good idea to use methods appropriate for ordinal data. Now, the good news is that M plus makes this really easy for you in terms of the application. The underlying model is relatively complex. It's a model that assumes that there are unobserved continuous latent response variables that underlie the ordinal responses, so basically a continuous variable that has been chopped up in the process of um, using categorical outcomes. And so we're trying to see to reconstruct that continuous underlying response variable, or at least its associations, its correlations, and for that, M plus estimates so-called threshold parameters and polychoric correlations that more appropriately reflect the underlying relationships than um, would the correlations directly between the ordinal outcomes. And so this is in complex in terms of the underlying mathematical model, but it's very easy to apply in M plus because all you have to do is define your indicators as categorical in the M plus syntax. Categorical in M plus means the variables are either binary or dichotomous, or they are ordered categorical with more than two categories. So polydomous ordinal variables would also fall into this category. So typically when you have Likert scale items on four or five or six or something response categories, then those would be considered categorical variables in the M plus software. In my example here, I have um, items from a computer game questionnaire. So um, here um, uh, individuals were asked how often they play certain types of computer games and the scale was pretty crude, ranging from never um, via rarely to often and very often. There were four response categories and so these are clearly ordinal data and so here in this case I want to see if I can fit a single factor so say that represents the uh, frequency with which individuals play computer games and I just picked four games from the list of games that individuals were asked about to see if these would 
um, form a unidimensional scale action game, sport game, simulation games, and driving simulator games. And for each of those, there were four response options in the questionnaire. And then you can see the factor model is specified in the same way as we would specify it for continuous data. There's really no difference in the specification, at least so say for a basic model, and then plus then supplies all the parameters that are specific to a, an ordinal factor model, such as, for example, those threshold parameters that indicate the relationship between the ordinal items and the underlying continuous response variable. So really that's the only difference in M plus. And then by default, M plus will use polychoric correlations in the analysis. It'll use so-called diagonal weighted least squares estimation, which in M plus is referred to as the WLSMV estimator that uses a probit link to link the uh, response variables to the items. And so that's to say the default option for handling uh, categorical or ordinal uh, items in um, factor analysis. It would work the same way for dichotomous items. In that case, M plus would use tetrachoric correlation coefficients that are estimated in the process. Another option in M plus would be to use an item response model. So using a logit link, you could do that as well by selecting as an estimator maximum likelihood and still um, defining your variables as categorical. In that case, M plus would then fit an item response model in terms of <clears throat> a um, or with using maximum likelihood estimation and full information as a full information estimator. That can be computationally demanding. And so the standard option in M plus is to use a probit link and a limited information um, approach uh, using the tetrachoric or polychoric correlation. That, that seems to work very well. It's computationally very easy. It works for relatively small samples as well. So it works, works quite as well or pretty much as well as um, a continuous model would work for a given sample size. Um, and so this is an option that is, so say, the standard option that many people use when they have ordinal data. So let's take a look at the output. In this case, we have 861 cases, so definitely enough for a model like this. But you could get away with maybe 200 also um, when using this approach. You can see the estimator here is not maximum likelihood, is WLSMV, which is appropriate for ordinal data. You can see the link here, the link function is probit. And next, M plus shows us the univariate proportions and counts for our items, so you can see um, how many people fell into each category for those four items here. And you can see they were clearly skewed. As so you can see, category one, which is the never or rarely category, was overrepresented. Um, and so they were skewed so say, in terms of not playing very much in this situation. And so definitely not a symmetric distribution, nothing nearly uh, resembling uh, a normal distribution, so with four categories that would be difficult anyway to have something that is symmetric and, and normal-like, so to say. So clearly this is a case where we don't want to use maximum likelihood estimation and pretend the variables are continuous because they clearly aren't. And PLUS also provides under the sample statistics the um, threshold parameters here that are estimated and then the correlation matrix with, in this case, the polychoric correlation. So those are the correlations that are estimated, so say, under the assumption that really what underlies these variables is a continuum of computer game usage rather than this crude um, categorization into four categories. And so once we take that into account, those are the actual correlations. And you can see that they're all pretty similar similarly high and they're pretty substantial. So there's an, a clear association between those games, um, individuals who play one type of game or one, one group of games, they tended to also play the other types of games. And those are pretty sizable and pretty similar correlations. The model then fits relatively well. Keep in mind, we have a large sample size, so there's a lot of power to reject 
uh, a model here and so there might be slight inhomogeneities um, in terms of uh, the one factor model so the model is not doesn't fit perfectly according to the chi-square but the fit statistics look relatively reasonable for this model in particular the um, SRMR doesn't look too bad. Now you have to be careful of course with these fit statistics because they were developed for continuous data for categorical data we don't know if they really apply in the same way and in general there are some issues with these fit indices so have to take them with a grain of salt and so my conclusion here would be that this model fits relatively well. You can see then under the model results you get factor loadings in the same way as you would for continuous data. The first loading in M plus is always fixed to one for each factor for identification purposes and that's no different with ordinal data. What is different is that you get the threshold parameters here with um, ordinal data that so say um, instead of getting intercepts as you would for continuous data you get these threshold parameters you get a factor variance estimate and you can also get a standardized solution so this is the completely standardized solution STDYX with the standardized factor loadings and you can see that those standardized factor loadings are decent in size given that this is item level data so shows that these items are fairly homogeneous they all have pretty similar loadings and pretty strong loadings so um, they're all decent measures of that computer game factor here and then at the bottom you get the r squared those are the standardized loading squared which would indicate item level reliabilities they're not very high but again that's for single items with only four response categories so that's relatively okay and so if we calculated a composite reliability here then that would look pretty okay across those four items. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about how to run factor analyses with ordinal data or binary data in M+. This would work in the same way for a structural equation model so if you had paths between multiple factors path coefficients you could also specify that in the same way your structural model could then be added to the model so that's um, no different from a confirmatory factor analysis. Hope you liked this video if you did then please hit the like button consider subscribing to this channel and don't forget to check out the description for additional resources and I'll see you next time.